Hello, people. Good evening and welcome to Lead Judges TV. I'm your host, Dan Potts, and I'm with Lead Judges. And me and Lee are going to talk about what's been happening <laughs> this first weekend of the season. Um, Lee, before we get into it, man, I'm just going to play your VT because I think it's important uh, for people to listen to what you'd said. Um, we've shortened it right down um, to get your thoughts on Friday. And then we're going to go into more generally about what's happening at this football club. But I think it's important to start with this because I really believe now everybody's starting to be on the same wavelength when it comes to this manager and this ownership. So um, let's just have a listen to you first of all, mate, and then we'll get into it. Ultimately, Mikel Arteta today has got to take the blame for this result. Got to take the blame because at the end of the day, I'm seeing players not performing. Players that are not performing. I'm seeing players like a Brentford that are not as good as Arsenal players. Let's be having it. Not as good as Arsenal players playing to the maximum of their ability and getting the best out of them. And I'm watching Arsenal not doing this. I'm not, I'm not seeing no cohesion between the players, no creativity in the midfield. Where is the creativity in this midfield? We're relying absolutely on this moment in time. We are relying on a 21-year-old kid in Smith Row who played well today, Smith Row. I'm going to have to say that. But ultimately, he is not a creative midfield player that's going to open up things. Waiting and waiting for our full-backs to come in uh, on the flanks. When they cross the ball, there's nobody in there. What tactic is that? Now, you can blame... Cronky as much as you like for that. Does he make those decisions? Is it his decisions to bring in the players that have been brought in? Ben White, what is... Listen, I'm not going to criticise Ben Wright. He's a good player. But ultimately, is he a £50 million player that we needed to make us better? No, he's not. Because at the end of the day, every little thing that's gone wrong with Arsenal over the last season was there again today. Nothing has changed. Now, you've changed the players... People say, oh, it's the players, it's the players. The players were changed and we've just seen the same, same performance as we've seen all the time. So it's now, to me, down to the manager. Lee, really passionate from yourself as ever, mate. Um, before we get into it, I just want to say a huge thank you to everybody who's subscribed so far. We're really seeing the channel growing. Uh, over 60k hits on just on that video there, mate. Um, 270 people watching live. Thank you all so much, man. We could not do this without you guys. Keep coming back. If you haven't done so already, smash a like on this video. Subscribe to the channel because we've got plenty more content coming out. Lee Judges, I just want to come to you. Uh, let's take away Friday night just, in, just for a moment because we'll get into that. I just want your thoughts on what, sum up in your words, what's happening at this football club in general at the moment. Because I think it rises much deeper than just fr Friday night. 100% it does. It's um, it's a shambles. It's a shambles from start to finish. Um, we've got a manager that's clearly not good enough for the job. I think that I've, I've watched a little bit of football over the weekend. Not a lot. I'm going to be honest, not a lot. But what I've seen, I've seen two teams um, not prepared for, for the beginning of the season. Two teams that are not ready. Manchester City looked a shambles to, to what they normally are. Didn't look players not ready. Players not fit, players not doing the business, and Arsenal. And it's the sorcerer and his apprentice. You know, uh, and I, I, I'm, I'm worried about what's happening at Arsenal. You know, players, you know, Bamiang and um, Lacazette not playing for the game, saying that they're ill. Now we're hearing that they may be going to Barcelona. You know, what if they're ill, you know what I mean? And also they're ill. And, um, Already the journalists are saying they're not um, ready for next week. You know, what are these journalist doctors? Do they know what, what illness it is and everything like that? If that's the case, let us know what it is. You know, things like that. I think it's been run terribly at this moment in time. And uh, I don't care what anybody says. Um, th things needed to be done. Um, and people turn around and say, you know, um, I'll give give Mikel Arteta a couple of transfer windows. Give him this, give him that. Don't watch with me no more. No, don't, you don't need transfer windows to make players better to get to get uh, in there today. I don't like bringing up Spurs, but I'm gonna I'm gonna bring them up now. They was in the same position as us. In fact, I think they was in a worse state than us with what's gone on on that. New managers come in. Look at the hungriness. Look at the the the. Um, I know it's only one game, but look at what, look what he's done to that team in one game in six weeks training, six weeks proper pre-season. Hasn't bought anybody 
much different to what we have. And, and they've got players playing for him already. I fear that players are not playing for this manager. And if, you know, I, I look at it and I'm going to say this, I was happy to see the, the team that was out there on um, Friday because I um, wanted to have a look at what I see. Aubameyang has been absolutely woeful on the left-hand side. He brings in Martinelli that everybody wanted to see and he was absolutely woeful as well. So for me now, it's not the players because they're, they're not they're not performing whether they're, it's a Bamiang, whether it's Martinelli. I have to say that, like, you know. I look at um, people People go on, oh, I've heard people even in, in, in the channel making comments saying that um, it's all Cronky's fault, blaming Cronky, blaming this, blaming that. It's not his players and all that, like, you know. Let's get, it fa get the facts right that it is his players nearly now. You know, also, um, um, in, in saying that, then get the best out of what you can from those players. I look at Brentford and they've, they've got no one in that we would say, oh, yeah, he's a great, great player and everything like that. But I see them they're, they're getting the maximum out of their players, their manager getting the maximum out of them, like, you know, playing to their, playing to their strengths as players and, and, and making things right and doing it all that there. People have also said, you know, straight away now, you know, calling for Balligan, for instance, like, yeah, me and Kevin said on our show a week ago that Balligan should be put out on loan. We said that, right? Fans, if we can see that, then sure. And we we are not in the training ground week in, week out, hour after hour. You know, now everybody turns around and says that Balligan is not ready for uh, for the uh, Premier League at this moment in time. What's pre-season for, Dan? That's to find these things out so that they know that, well, you know, after two or three weeks, you go, look, I know he's not ready. I know he's not ready, so we'll get him out on loan. The things like this. Reese Nielsen, you know, I don't know what's happening with him. All of a sudden, you know, you're asking him to come on and try and win you a game of football yesterday or on Friday. It's just so many, so many things wrong with, with it. Like it's, it's, you know, what what is our transfer policy? What is it, you know? The recruitment had a chance this season, this this um, window, to put things right then. They've not. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll ask the question a while. All last season looking for him to sign for the club, hunting him down, you know, and then this season, nothing. So it tells me, like, they're just throwing a net out there, trying to bring in such, and, 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 you know, see who we get. There's no, there's no plan. Someone says about the processes, but I don't see no plan, no strategy in a transfer window. I don't see no plan, no strategy when I'm watching games of football. What has improved? What is improving in this football club? And I'm afraid now, um, and listen, I'm going to say this now, and I know you, you went a lot earlier than me about Mikel Arteta. And, and we're both going to admit this, you know, I mean, we, we wanted it to work for him. We wanted it to work for him. And, and you can see that, you know, I can clearly see now that it's not going to work. You can clearly not see, I can clearly see that it's not going to work. And now things have got to change. Now, and I, I've got to say this point, and I'm not saying it's a, such a big issue, right, about Shaka being the captain. But when you've gone three, four weeks trying to sell him or, like, you know, to Roma and whatever, like, you know what I mean? Not only is he back in the team, he's back in as captain. What is that telling about our recruitment? If you're trying to get rid of someone or sell someone two weeks ago and then all of a sudden he's playing in the first team, opening up that and walking out. With the, it's not just with the, the fact that he's come back into the first team that annoys me, Lee. It's the fact that he threw the armband on the floor two years ago. We're the only club I know that picks it up and puts it back on his arm. Uh, what does that tell you about the mentality of this club still? I, I just, I find that very, very disappointing. Um, yeah, and uh, I'm with well, you. <clears throat> I, I, I'm, uh, I'm with you, mate. I, I find it very, very bizarre, this plan process. I can't see it. It's invisible to me, mate. And so is a playing style, Lee. I can't see a style two years into a job nearly, 18 months, sorry. And I can't see a style of play, Lee. No, I can't. I, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm honestly now looking at it. Uh, I went football this morning, you know, and a few of the Spurs fans, but they were, they were there and I was, you know, they were bantering about how, how bad it was, of course, you know what I mean? But we had a serious conversation and um, I, someone said, you know, we could be in a, bad, a relegation battle this time around, like, you know. And one of those Spurs fans said, and he was in a relegation battle until... Boxing Day, but you didn't realise it. 
and I thought about it and I thought, you know, we wasn't. Do you remember if we'd have lost that game against Chelsea that day, we would have yeah. been in a real difficult position. So I look at it. And if, we're, and, and if the rumours are right and the, the rumours are true that we're going to be signing Ulegaard, it looks like now what I'm hearing today is that it's going to be on loan with a, with a, um, an option to buy next season. So I don't really know why why we're looking for a loan and an option to buy, but that's another thing, unless we're going to invest in other areas. It'd be great if we do. If we can get him on loan for a year and then invest in other areas, that'd be fantastic. But are we strengthening that position, Lee? Let me no, ask you. No, that's, that's, that's the same. point. Then. I, I, yeah. I look at same it. Same as last I, year. It's exactly the same midfield last year where I was looking at the midfield from last season thinking, I know it's got to improve. You know, and the, the recruitment said this, is, which is a great thing, which I, I think was the thing. You know, you sell Shaka, you get in Basuma, you, you, you're changing the dynamics of the midfield. You're bringing in Udegaard, great. You know, you're bringing Uwa, Changing it for Willock, you bring, you're changing the dynamics of the midfield. We had done nothing. We've done nothing in this transfer wing. Let's not kid ourselves about this transfer window. We've done nothing. You know, someone made a great point to me yesterday. Like you know, said that Ben White played uh, played with, at Brighton in a, in a back three, right? All 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 for Brighton. And now all of a sudden he's in a he's in a, a back two. So. As you know that he can be any good in a back two, I don't know. I I, I don't know what Leeds played. If I'll be honest. But, you know, you bought a central defender that has played most of his professional career in a back three. That's what I was told. I don't know if that's true, but um, if it is. The thing is... No, it, is true. it is true, but it, let's, just touch true. On ben White. let's just touch on Ben White very quickly. I, I like the signing. I still do. I, feel, I think he's got uh, time to grow and I think he's a good centre-off. My worry was that he got bullied by Ivan Tony, and he's up against Lukaku and potentially Kane next. So I don't think it's going to get any easier for the lad. Now... He's not the only option because Gabriel, I think, is probably a better partner for him than Pablo Marie. But we have gone into a situation like Connor Cody when people were saying he'd be good, but he does only play well in a back three. Maybe you're right there, Lee. Maybe Ben White is more of a back three and he's going to have to learn now to play into that back four position. And again, it's a position that I really did not see as a priority. And while I think it's a good signing, I think it's clear to see that further up the field, we are struggling. But are we? does it matter who we buy, Lee? with this manager because if we had Messi up top I think we would have struggled if we had you know Neymar or Mbappe the style of play is so negative to watch at the moment I don't think like you say it matters whether it's Balogun Eddie and Ketia um, Martinelli Lacquer or Aubameyang they're all missing chances because, or, or, or lack of chances because of our style of play and I think that's on Arteta mate yeah, I, I agree. I, I, you know, we, we get onto that a little bit later on. I think, you know, when you look at things that, you know, I'm looking at, you know, first of all, let's, let's just, just break it down. We're blaming our terror at the moment. It's not all his fault. Of course, mm. the ball have got to be um, to blame for it. First of all, and Cronky, you know what I mean? Like, Josh Cronky turned around and said, you're going to be excited in this transfer window because we're going to be aggressive. It's someone put on a tweet today, like, you know. You know, an absolute joke. Really, if I look on it, you know, all what all happened with the protests and the negative feedback around Arsenal and all that, like, you know, they've actually just put two fingers up to us. That's all they've done. They're not, you know, let's be honest. So they are obviously accountable for it all. Now, and, and they, they, they've they applied, uh, you know, give us Mikel Arteta. The fact of the matter is now, there's two, I don't think um, we've got an inexperienced manager and a decent manager in Emery, but they're not elite. Right, it's not working. We've got to bring in an elite manager, you know, and that will save us money if they're not going to put on transfers because what it will do is that he'll make players better and make them better and better. Like, you know, we've not had an elite manager um, with, since we re replaced Arsene Wenger. Arsene Wenger was elite manager for so many years, maybe fall on the wayside a little bit. We can all agree on that, but ultimately, we have not got. We've not had that in there. So th that's something that they've got to look to do, like, you know. The recruitment then is, is, is who's ever in charge of that, you know what I mean? It's got to be sex as well as Arteta. Because when I look at it, like, you know, let's just take the right back situation, right? They go and buy um, Cedric on loan, um, uh, you know, so they get him on loan, which they have to buy a fee for, and then they sign him on a free transfer, like, yeah. And then They've got Chambers and they've got Bellerin at the football club as right backs. 
Last week in the pre-season game, he brings on Maitland-Niles as a substitute to play that position. And this yeah. week, he brings in the new boy to play in that position. What, what, what does this tell you? You know what I mean? Like, at, at the end of the day, what does it actually tell you, got, you know, going on? Does it, So, when people turn around and say, oh, you know, he needs two transfer windows, he needs this and he needs that. He's been at the club 18 months and he, or, or a year, all through pre He doesn't know who's his best right back is, Dan. So what, what confidence does that give you if you don't know who your best right back is going to be going into the season? Now, I look at Manchester City today, three games, and I said it on a tweet, but like people who misunderstand what I'm saying to say, listen, Arsenal deserve all the criticism from whoever that they get for that performance. But what I'm saying about Manchester City, that's three games on the spin with all that money and this wonderful, wonderful coach that Pep is, right? They've lost the Champions League final 1-0. They lost the Charity Shield 1-0 and they lost the Spurs today 1-0. And he continues to play without a forward, but no one says nothing. So when it comes to his apprentice, right, and you see the, the, you see the main man, the Messiah, the one that everybody loves making mistakes like that, well, then I understand why Pep, uh, why Arteta's making these mistakes because, you know, it seems to me, you know, a little bit of stubbornness, a little bit of arrogance, and, and that has been thrown at um, Mikel's um, door, hasn't it? Like, you know, the, you don't even know who your main right back is, Dan. You know what I mean? Like, now, I, again, recruitment. Let's just go on to recruitment again with, 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 with Granite Shacker. I think if you ask any, forget about the hatred towards Granite Shacker. Let's forget about that. Forget about what he's throwing the armband off. Let's just f- focus on the player. Fantastic in the Euros. Absolutely fantastic in the Euros. Good player. He'd be an absolute fantastic player playing in Italy. The Premier League does not suit him, Dan, because as soon as the Premier League game comes today, look at it. It's that little bit quicker, a little bit quicker. It gets found wanting. Right? But we can... Mikel Arteta... Pers- persisted with him for another season. He slows our play down, Lee, as well. I watched him on Friday night. He slows it down so much, Granite Xhaka, every season, and we're still playing him. And it it, it it deflates me when I see the team news. You know, our, our midfield is not going to be improved this season, it seems, because Erdegaard's coming in, we believe now, which means it's the eighth-place midfield of last season. It's the eighth-place front three at the moment, and we'll talk about Lacquer and Aubameyang in a minute, because I yeah. think we need to. I think when you look at what we're doing at the back, like you said, spot on, mate. It's not just he doesn't know his best right back. He doesn't know his best 11, Mikel Arteta, still. We've got the goalkeeper that's still making silly errors. And apparently all I hear, whenever I question the manager, all I get back is, but he's improved us defensively, Dan. Well, I saw a terrible defensive display yeah. on Friday night. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I don't know, you know where that comes from. I don't want to get into a slaggy match about the manager because I never wanted him in the first place. And I know you didn't, Lee. He is not up to it. Cronky no. put him in charge. So you're right in when you were having to point the fingers at the ownership. 100% we are. And I don't. I, I have a fear, Lee, that we're going to be stuck because I don't think the Cronkies care. I think the elite manager you're talking about is clearly the one that's available, which is Antonio Conze, which everybody wants. I don't see the Cronkies going for him because he's going to want a lot of money and he's going to want to be provided with a lot of money for the transfer window in January and the following summer if he does come in now. So where do we go from here, Lee? I, I'm worried, mate. I think we're stuck. Well, this is the problem, like So, you know, we're talking about Mikel at this moment in time. What is he? What is he? Can so, have we got him in to be a coach? Right, let's say that we have, yeah? We've brought him in to be a coach. Now, I look at the game against Brentford when, when you've got a physicality game like that. Saliba would be like the perfect player to have there. So why hasn't he coaching him to become the better central defender, to be able to play? Where Why do you feel that you've got to go and spend £50 million on um, Ben White when you're supposed to be in there to coach and make people better? Now, that 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 is a problem for me. Like, you know, now... There, there are so many things wrong with the football club. It's not just Mikel Arteta. It's, it's the, the, as we said. Agree. It's, it's everything. It's the Cronkies, the recruitment, 
You know, he hasn't been given the proper tools to, to, in this transfer window. So what, we've got to wait another transfer window and another transfer transfer window? I, I don't think that we should. Now, if he's really now pushing for Uligard to come into the team, which I, listen, people are criticising Uligard. He's a decent player, very, very good player. He's 22 years of age, so his ceiling could be a lot higher in a couple of years' time. So I don't think it's a bad signing, Dan. Yeah, no, I agree, uh, I agree. You know, but ultimately, he's got to improve. He's got to, you know, he's got to score more goals. He's got to... Um, do more assists. So how is you? How are you, you're not just going to put him in the team? He's going to do that, Dan. You've got to work on him. You've got to coach him. You've got to make him a better player. Now, if Mikel can't do it with Saliba, what makes you think he's going to do it with um, with Ulegaard? You know what I mean? So the, the difference between Pep. I don't think Pep's a fantastic coach, by the way. I think he's a very, very good man, motivator, and things like that. But and ultimately he has to get the be- he gets the best players in and he's got a man management side of it all like. basically Dan is a little bit like Arsene Wenger at some sort of stage. If you've got the best players, you'll win games of football. You know what I mean? Like, like he, plays, he plays the best style, yeah. I'm, I'm with you there. Pep Guardiola plays an amazing style. But as 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 kind of recruitment and getting coaches and play and and getting players improving, I'm totally with you. Spot on there. And you know, he gets I haven't the real seen that with Arteta either. I haven't seen Arteta you know, improving like, players. For instance, so. you know, I'll go a little bit on the Pep last season, which is the difference between him and Mark Mikel Arteta. Manchester City was struggling last season, like you know, didn't have a centre half and all that. Did he make Aki a better player? Coach him and all that. No, he went out and bought Diaz, and then all of a sudden, Manchester City go on to be a great, great side. Get all that. Now I look at it like, you know, what I mean, like, has he got anybody in there that he can make a good centre forward? Can he make uh, Sterling a good centre forward or or whatever? Oh no, no, he, you know, uh, up to the owner. I want Harry Kane. So he gets the best player in that position. So you're going to be a very, very good. But Mikel can't do that, Dan. Yeah. So you know, you're asking him to do something that that that, that he isn't going to be able to do so for me it's it's a big big problem and uh what i'm seeing now is I'm, I'm watching teams i'm 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 watching west ham for instance like you know what i mean david moyes getting the best out of his players he possibly can like you know what i mean I, I i see the brentford manager doing the same i see um, Watford getting fantastic uh, performance out of their, their their players and everything like that. I see Tottenham today getting the best he can out of all of those players. Deli Alley all of a sudden working hard, making tackles and things like that. Like you know, I don't see that with any of our players. And for me now, I don't I don't want to wait six games, Dan, and then like, I want you know we've got to do it now. We've got to say and listen. I, I'm, I really, before we go going into fit, I really, really wanted Mikel Arteta to do well at this football club and be a success. And I know that the, there was a lot of people that wanted him out a lot earlier than me. And I never ever criticised them for that. That was their opinion. You know what I mean? Like, And I don't think there's anything wrong with you felt six months ago that he wasn't the right person for the job. I, I, I've got no problem with that. Like, you know what I mean? Like, But what I've seen now, and what I'm seeing, I, 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 I get I get people on group chats, Dan, saying, I don't want to have a new manager because I don't want to go through like another change of manager and it's not good for the club and everything like that. I've yeah, just I seen Spurs, well. Spurs just change their manager in, 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 and in six weeks look 10 times better for it. So I don't believe in it. That. If Mikel Arteta is not good enough for the job because you haven't got a manager, because, you know, you don't want to change because whatever, like, you know, like, it's got to be done. And, you know, it can't get no worse than really what it is at this moment in time, Dan. Like, this is, and I'll be honest, this is the worst team I've seen at, for Arsenal for a very, very long while. Very, very long while. I can't remember the last do time you think, I've seen do you think, Lee, like, Arsenal. Do you think, Lee, as well? Because I agree. Listen, you've had longer in the game than me. I've had 33 years and this is the lowest it's been. But I do put that down to the manager in terms of our team performances. I think Kroenke's an issue. I think the board are clueless, 100%. But I do put this down to the manager because I do not see this team as a poor team with the individual quality we've got. I see a poor team because the manager can't make them play as a team. No, no sorry, Dale. I was, just, I was going to say, I, I totally agree with that. Like, people are turning around and saying bad play. You can't, you know, he can't do with bad players. Who are the bad players then in the Arsenal team? So this, this go through it. Who's bad player? Who is a bad player in the Arsenal team? In your opinion, who's I think, bad? I, 
I think it's clear to see the positions that we need to strengthen other than the bad players are the right back area, the centre midfield defensively area, because I just don't like him. I know that people say he's not the issue, but I th- believe we can upgrade on him. Creativity in the midfield and a centre forward. They're the five positions. Yeah, well, no, you're missing the point. I'm asking you, who are bad players? People turn around and say, oh, he can't, he can't coach bad players. So I'm asking the question... Who are bad players in that Arsenal side? Who, you know, are absolutely awful players in that team? I think God awful players. I, I, I personally feel Willian. I think he's one that's God awful. I think he needs to go. Kalasinac, Bellerin, Granite Chaka, Mohamed El Nini, um, and then I think that's probably where it stops. If I'm honest with you, not a huge right. fan of holding or changing. How many of them played? On how many of them played? Thank you. Right. This is my point. This is my point, mate. And I've been saying this for ages and it's only now that it's coming out. This is such a bad team. This is such a bad team. Is it though? Because I saw Lacazette and Aubameyang scoring goals. I've seen Pepe scoring goals. I think Thomas Part is a great player. I think Smith Rowe and Saka are fantastic. I like Martinelli. I like the I like the uh, the young lad, Laconga, who's come in. I thought he was brilliant on Friday night. I don't think Leno is horrendous. I don't think Leno's great, but I don't think he's horrendous. I like Kieran Tierney. He's my favourite player. I've got a lot of time for Gabriel. I think Ben White's a good player. So do we have a shocking team here or do we have a shocking manager who can't get the best out of them? So I'm with you now, mate. I was a bit slow at your point, but I'm totally agreeing with you. Yeah, right. You know, so like, so, so you know, just I'm just going to pick out one from, I'm going through it as I'm going here. Like, you know what I mean? Like, Lee's put Bellerin Chambers, Maitland Niles, Eni Shaka, Willian Nelson, Eddie Lacazette. Right, okay. But out of all those players, one or two of them played on um, Friday and I'm going to say this now. It's probably the worst performance for a very, very long while in an Arsenal team. So it doesn't matter who's playing. You know what I mean? I don't think Arsenal have got awful players in their team. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yes, but but ultimately, like, you know, Shaka gets brought, brought up a lot. But why does he get brought up a lot, Dan? Shall I tell you why he gets brought up a lot? Because he's always playing, mate. He's always playing. So the manager keeps on picking him. So is that actually... Um, Shaka's fault? No, it, it isn't. You know what I mean? If you keep playing him, you know, you're either rating him or not like, you know. Uh, and that's, that's my point. That's my point. When I go to the forwards, are, are our forwards any worse or any better than, than than what I've seen at Brentford or Tottenham or whatever? Like, you know, let's just have a look at our forward line. That what potentially well, it costs 300, 300 million for a start. So they can't okay. Let's talk about Pepe. £72 million. Pound. We talk about Abamyang, sixty of million pound, Lacazette fifty million pound, right? So when they turn around and say the Cronkies haven't spent, that's a lot of money for a front three, then. Well, it's a lot of money for a front three, right? Why is it, why why all of a sudden is Abamyang not performing? Why? And I look at Pepe. People have gone on about Pepe. We signed him, he's had two managers, he's had this, he's had this and he's had that. and Making excuses and excuses for him, right? When is he going to put in six, seven, eight performances? And, and I think to myself, he's not. And I look at him, is he a bad player? No, because I don't think he's allowed, the system doesn't suit his play or whatever. So we're not getting the best, so we're, we're not getting the best out of totally agree. Pepe. Now that totally for me is 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 part. Of, we've spent seventy million pound on this player. We have got to get the best out of him because he's a, he's got the ability. But the manager is failing to get the best out of him. So I would now like to see another manager come in and get the chance of getting the best out of him. And I'm sorry, Dan, if that doesn't work, then we're getting another one that's going to get the best out of these players until we find one that works. And that is nothing against. Mikel Arteta, what it comes, what, you, know, you know, it all does come down to the manager at the end of the day. I don't care what anybody says, you know, I mean, it, it's been like that for since I've ever played football. You know, I've been, I've played in teams, right, Dan, I've played in teams when the manager's been sacked, mm. right? And, you know, I, I actually played for a manager, I'm not going to reveal who it was, like, you know, and he was... Of, uh, you know, all hearted manager, everything like that. And they sacked him. And I thought, oh, that's the wrong decision, blah, 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 blah. We brought in another manager and 
I said at the end of the season, do you know what, Mr Chairman, if you hadn't sacked him, we'd have got relegated. And that, yeah. that is the thing. That is the thing, That's you know the what I mean? Like, yeah. It's the reality of it, like, you know. And I tried my best for that manager, but it just didn't work then. And it's not personal, it's football. Yeah. You're 100% right, mate. Uh, listen, there's over 1,400 people watching live. Absolutely incredible. Uh, please, if you would like to donate to the podcast and you can, uh, enter in a super chat. Um, loads of comments coming in and we will put them up and we'll read them out. Uh, this is come from a kind donation from Vinny. Thank you so much for your kind donation. Lee, big up for this channel. Uh, we can clearly see the inexperience in Arteta's managerial ways. Tactics, man management, game management. Hashtag Cronky out and all them clowns bending over for him. Lee, if I was to ask you this, uh, thank you so much for your kind donation. Coming off the back of that question, Lee, if I was to ask you this, what percentage of fan base now do you feel are on the same page? Do you think there are, say, 20 to 30 percent of people who are still backing this process and the Cronkies and Arteta to get it right? Or do you think that there's a majority now? Like if I was to ask you a percentage, what, what would you go with as, as a fan base, mate? I, I think it's it's over fifty percent now that have changed their mind, and and I'm, there's there's a lot of fans out there that have gone so vocal towards mm. Mikel Arteta, they can't even be honest enough now to say, do you know what, this is not the best for the football club. In my opinion, you know, you know, I speak to me mate, like what we've spoken about the game today um, mm. when we was doing our photo shoot. You went to the game, uh, and and you said how how. It was exciting in the in the in the away end, and then it changed. I spoke to my mate today who went, and he said, "Look, you know, there was a it completely changed in that did, um, yeah. away end. Now everybody was coming out saying that you know he's got to go, he's got to do this. He's, you know, I think that he's lost the fans. Mm. Listen, it can all change in one game. Of course, it can against Chelsea. If it, if it does, fantastic. But if it doesn't, I I, I can see." Um, it all going against Mikel, on, you know, against Chelsea. Because do you know what hasn't helped with what Tottenham done today? Like, you know, what I mean, they're not a better team than the Man City. We all know that, but they've gone and produced a performance that they, their team can be proud of. Mm. And they've not just gone there and, and had their belly tiggled and lost, like we have done to so many occasions. Well, um, I, I, I looked at a match of the day. I think it was uh, was it Chris Hudson or someone had spoke to you about it and said, "Watch match of the day. There was no team worse than Arsenal on match of the day." And I, I must, I had to admit, I had to admit that you know there wasn't. I looked at match of the day. Watched it only a couple of hours ago because I was I didn't get to see it yesterday. And I looked at the, even the teams that lost. I saw a style of play. I understood what they were trying to do. They had chances. They created some of them. Even Leeds got absolutely hammered, but they still had chances. You know, Norwich still had some play. And we just had absolutely nothing as far as I'm concerned. Let's just read this super chat out quickly. Uh, Fred's uh, given us a card donation. Thank you very much, uh, Fred. Very interesting in this, and I want to get your opinion on this, Lee. Uh, Rumours of a protest this weekend uh, against Chelsea. Arteta out equals Cronky's given more time. Target Cronky first. And the reason I'm going to say I agree with this, and I don't think that it's Cronky's fault that he's picking the players and Cronky's given the recruitment and all that kind of stuff. What I will say is this. If Stan Cronky was removed, yeah, then we would get another owner in and the owner would see that Mikel Arteta and this board are not up to it and they'd remove it. Now, it's no good getting an owner in. He's just going to be another Cronky. We need an owner that comes in that cares and has ambition. And I think it has to be somebody ruthless like a Roman Abramovich, um, is in my opinion. Jeffrey's given a kind donation. Thank you very much, Jeffrey. Emery had the same players. They're crap. I disagree with that, Lee. I don't think Emery did have the same players. I actually think Emery had worse players <laughs> because I always say this in that Baku final, we had Monreal instead of Tierney. We had Iwobi and Welbeck and Mikatarian instead of Saka, Smithro and Martinelli. We had El Nenny instead of Thomas Party. We had Socrates and Mustafi instead of Gabriel and White. I don't think we did have the same players. And I actually think Emery got more out of them to get us to a Europa League final and one point off fourth place. And let's be honest, he did deserve to go because he did mess that up. But actually, I think he, I saw Lacazette and Aubameyang playing together with a three at the back and Lacazette and Aubameyang with Ramsey or Ozil behind. So actually, I think we have regressed under Mikel Arteta and I think that's clear to see. What would you say to that, mate? Oh, you can't argue with that. I, I think that he's, you know, we've, we've got, you know, listen... Emery's players were just as poor as these ones, if I'll be honest. Like, you know, but I do think that these players have got potential, but we're wasting that potential. You know, we've got to get, you know, they're not going to improve under what I'm seeing. And and, and that's 
that is it now. I, I'm, I'm, I'm totally convinced about that now. You know, if um, if Mikel Arteta can turn this around, then he's a bigger man than what I think he'll ever be like. You know, mm-hmm. the fact of the matter is, you've got, you know, is it going to give um, um, Cronky's time? No, because at the end of the day, this is another failure on their their their, their side. You know what I mean? Like, you know, another failure for them. Another failure on the recruitment. Another failure on, on the manager. So that's two managers that have brought in since Arsene Wenger, and they've been failures. So it is on their heads. That is. The Cronkies are not going to go down, in my opinion. You know, the only way you're going to get the Cronkies out of this football club is if they you turn up to a game against Chelsea and there's not one fan in there. There's not one fan bar in the in the in the shop. There's the, the you know the the shop opens and. They just sit there all day, and not one fan goes in there. They go into the ground, and there's not one. There's not one fan in there. There's not one program being sold. There's not one beer being sold. There. That is the only way that's going to happen. But that's never going to happen, Dan. It's never going to happen. So they're always going to be be there. Now, this this talk about that quickly. Sixteen years at the end, I can't remember. But I I, I tell you this now: home game against Chelsea. The tickets have gone on general sale after 18 months oh, unbelievable. of unbelievable. not being at a football, where everybody's desperate to go football, right? Mm. It's, it's gone on general sale. Mm. What does that tell you? That that's enough to tell the Cronkies you know, that you know that, that is, that's incredible, Dan. Mm. Arsenal Football Club have gone on general sale for the a Chelsea. game where no one's gone into the Premier League against Chelsea. On general sale, all right, I know they're the, 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 the dearest seats and that, you know, 90, 100 pounds, but ultimately general sale after all that time and not being back in, that tells you everything you want to know about the Cronkies reign and that tells you everything about what that what fans are watching. Because I'll tell you what, if I was not a season ticket holder, Dan, right, mm-hmm. I would not be going to the game against Chelsea because I'm not, not because I don't love Arsenal and support Arsenal. It's that when you go through there at four o'clock, you know, I mean, I've got to take an alarm clock to wake me up because yeah. it's the most dull football. And I'm not spending my money on dull, boring football. It, I, Arsene Wenger's time was frustrating at times. But I'll tell you what, I got entertained. Yeah, no, you're right, mate. 100% you're right. And I, I, I can't disagree with what you're saying there. And I go to football for more reasons than to watch the 90 minutes. And I know you do too. I'm there socially with friends and family. And talking to family, uh, thank you very much for this kind donation. Please hit the like button, support this great partnership. Dan and Lee giving up their time to entertain and cruise in their passion. Much appreciated. You can say Much thank you. Much appreciated, Donna, but you could have actually just bought your son dinner, you know what I mean, instead of Donna. <laughs> yeah, that's it. No, I appreciate that, man. Thank you very much. Another one's come in as well uh, from Ollie. Cronky out. Big up, lads. Hit the like button, people. Yeah, hit so the like button. Most... Subscribe. Subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, listen, we've We've nearly got 10,000 subscribers. Got to say this, Dan, we've been like five mm. weeks of doing this, you know what I mean? It's unbelievable, really. So, uh, um, you know, thanks for um, pressing the button and, and, and the subscribe button. But if you are watching for the first time and you haven't subscribed, do us a favour, just subscribe. It'll be uh, a long way off for us going um, further uh, along the chain and doing some other stuff for you. Yeah, 100%. Could not agree more, Lee. Uh, nearly 2,000 of you at the moment watching live. Unbelievable numbers. Um, please smash that like button. It would be much appreciated. Lee, we've got to talk about it. Um, there's two things I want to bring up before we kind of wrap up and go to a close. One of them is uh, what could happen um, and what you'd like to see happen <laughs> moving forward. But first of all, we've got to talk about this nonsense with Aubameyang and Lacazette. I don't understand um, what has happened. I think a lot of it is rumours at the moment. Unwell is the uh, what we're being told. I don't know how much to believe. It's clearly not COVID because it would have been, we would have been told if it was COVID. So something's happening with these two. There's rumours today I'm hearing that Barcelona are interested. There's a rumour of a swap deal with Coutinho with one of them and potentially both of them are leaving. Now, I'm a little bit on the fence with this one, Lee. If they're causing drama, then they need to go. They're not performing. They're not on form. And I know Lacazette had a good season, but in pre-season, he's not been great. But actually, when you look at it, what is happening with these two individuals, because they're so close, is I think that they've clearly fallen out with somebody. I don't know if it's the manager, if it's the ownership, if it's the direction of the club, whatever it be. I think something's happened there. What can you see happening? And what do you think has happened, Lee, in your opinion? 
Well, I, I'm I'm missed by all this because, you know, again, like the old um, the the Mikel um, supporters, and we got a few of them in our group were turning around um, when um, when Mikel, uh, when Martinelli signed his contract, when Saka signed his contract, when Smith Rowe signed his contract, like ah, oh, they all ate uh, 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 Mikel, but all of a sudden all these youngsters are signing and all that, like you know, and then you hear all the there's a split in the camp of Bamiang and, and um, Lacazette and all that. Like, and that tells me, it tells me one thing, Dan, like, you know, it's all the experienced players that maybe that know, that know what it's all about. You know, the, the young, these youngsters only know one way, the Arteta way, like, they don't know what it's like. So obviously they're seeing things and they're not happy about things. I don't really know, like, you know what I mean? So <laughs> listen, if Aubameyang and um, Lacazette have fallen out with the manager, maybe they're just it's a way for them to get out of the club because it, that, you know I, I still say it with Aubameyang he was given full streams and whatever like you know if that's the case get them out and bring anybody in but ultimately who are you going to bring in now? Who are you going to bring in now? Let's have got some um, cards and aces up their sleeves. I, I don't really know what, what they're going to do. You know. Um, the whole thing is, is a mess. It's a mess, you know what I mean? You're going into the first game of the season um, and we were, we were in total disarray, you know what I mean? Now, that's bad management, you know what I mean? Like, if you go to work on a Monday morning and the, the, your shop floor's in, in disarray, you know, that's down to you to just put it right. And, you know, it does seem that to me a lot of people keep falling out with Mikel Arteta for whatever reason, like, you know, and that... that brings me on to being a good man manager now um i'm going to be honest with you you know what i mean like it's a little bit different for pep no one really knows if he's a great man manager and whatever because you know if they don't do well they're out you know what i mean like no no one comes in that's the way it is you've got to have to be a, a manager you know and i'm only talking like any any sort of level you've got to have you've got to put the arm around the shoulder you've got to do this for certain people and realize it and everything like that and, and unfortunately in f football, as a manager, it's not always your way. It's the right way. You have to um, sometimes, um, what's the word, compromise on certain things, do different things. So I feel that for me, I think for me, um, you know, it is a bit of a worry um, that these players are not ha are not happy for whatever reason, like, you know. And why, why two, three, four days before the season starts, you know? I, I don't really, I don't really regret that, you know, and um, it, I, 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 feel, I, I do, I do fear for everything at this moment in time. Like, do you know what I'm getting the feeling, Dan? And, and that I don't know if you feel this as well, but what I'm seeing on and off the field, the club is not being run properly. It's not being run properly off the field, and it's not being run properly on the field. And for me, as a fan, it's a worry. Massive worry, mate. And I said this, and I think we have had, and I said it to Robbie on AFTV. I said, it's neglect of a football club, this ownership. We have got an owner. I'm going to read this super chat in a minute, but we've got this owner who is silent. That's why they call him Silent Stan. We've got his son who wants us to be excited but can't tell us why. We've got Vinay Venkatesham and Richard Garlic who have got together and been about as silent as Silent Stan. Vino van Karten for the last five years has been trying to sort out a European Super League. Richard Garlic has come in and, and so far, done absolutely nothing. We've got Edu, who's jet skiing, apparently trying to buy Odegaard. Well, I don't know if Odegaard trains on the sea, but that's where he's been for the last whatever pictures we see. Doesn't oh, look like an adventure. Well, hey, yeah, exactly. Doesn't look like a scouting experiment to me. It looks like a holiday with his boy. And we've got a manager who's an absolute novice. So top to bottom, we're a mess, an absolute mess. And, you know, in the super chat, they've just said, who would want to come to us now? And it leads on well, nicely I'll to that. I'll go answer on, that, on, right? on. and I'll, I will answer that. Like you know, Tottenham Hotspur Football Club went through sixty-six managers before they got their their one now. So don't worry about it. Someone will want to come to Arsenal, like right? you know what I mean. So there, there you think Conte would want to come, Lee? Do you think Conte would want to come? Well, he'd want money, uh, but ultimately, look, listen, you know what I mean. Like Conte's left up, left Ace. In, does he want money? I, I don't. We don't know that. Like you know, did Ace? Did when he went to Inter Milan? Did they promise him fortunes and whatever? Not not massive, massive fortunes. But why he's left Inter Milan is because they've said to him, we're going to have to sell our best right back and our best centre half. And he's looked at it and thought to himself, Do you know what? I ain't prepared to stay at a football club that's not going to keep its best players and decided to go. 
So, why for me, you know, I think that you know, it, it, would he come to Arsenal? Why? Why? Yeah, because he's had chats with Tottenham. He had yeah, this list right. there, conversations with Tottenham, so he'd be prepared to come. But obviously, like you know, it wouldn't be like where you could say, right, we get this and get that. But ultimately, ultimately, you know, what I mean, um, eventually he's going to get something, like you know. Now, if you're, you know, like if Conte come in and saying, you know, if you're sitting there as Conte, going, well, hold on, they've just spent fifty million on um, on a central defender. They're they're prepared to to bring in back Ulagard. Do you know what I mean? Like if if I can get in now and maybe get in one or two. Then who knows? So I think that that's something there that I would be looking at there. I, I would also, I think someone just put in the chat, it's just going so quickly, chat. I didn't, I just caught the, the end of it. I'll take the, the AX manager and um, a, a Mark Overmars and get rid of um, Ed. Look, listen, Ed, as everybody knows, one of my favourite players in the Invincibles, thought he was vastly underrated. A great player. Not done his job as far as I'm concerned. So yeah, bring in, bring in two nooks at them yeah. two. If that's the case, you know, yeah, I'm I'm up for it, like you know. So for me, for me, I'm, um, you know, Conte would be my first choice. Now we need someone in. We listen as a club. We needed a player at this. If I was in charge of Arsenal and I was a Cronkies, I would have brought in a big, big signing. Uh, whether it be a Madison and all, uh, you know, I would have gone for Madison because it would have been a big, big fig for me to just say right. Um, that would have been a statement. As uh, Leicester are better than us, come above us. But you know what? We're the Arsenal. We're taking your best midfield player, like you know. What I mean, that would have been my my. That would have been a lovely thing to do. If we're not going to do it with a, with a, a players, then I want an elite manager and and then someone that I know is going to get the best out of these players. And I think that, in my honest opinion, I think whether it be Benitez, whether it be um, Brendan Rodgers. Uh, Someone's mentioned the Brighton manager Potter. I think whoever comes in would do a would get a bet do a better job. Get these players playing a lot better than what Mikel Arteta is doing. Now, if you've got Conte in there, he would do it even more. Mm. In my opinion, that right. you know, get the best out of these players, and it's not going to get us to where we want to go. But I could tell you what you know. What I mean, if we're not, you know, we got outplayed, outclassed, outfought by Brentford. Yeah, in every department then. If someone yeah, can't improve on that, then we've, we 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 have got massive problems with our players, and I believe that they could. Well, listen, we I saw someone put uh, sent in our WhatsApp group the other day the top twenty managers in the Premier League, and Mikel Arteta was nineteenth. He's the Arsenal manager. We've got the the second worst manager on paper in the league. That's not good enough, mate. And I'm not saying that's Mikel Arteta's fault because actually he's tried to do his best job. He's just never been ready for the job. The problem I've got with Mikel Arteta is the arrogance of him. Some of the stuff he says is so ridiculous. And I just think that he's way out of his depth. And I've never liked him. I've never understood it. I've not seen a playing style. You know, and, and people say to me, what do you want to see? I want to see us progress. That's what I want. I wanted Mikel Arteta to work. It was never going to, in my opinion, and it's proven not to. We need to get somebody in with a playing style, whether that's defensive or attacking. I don't mind because Diego Simeone isn't this attacking Pep Guardiola manager, but he's bloody good. Antonio Conte knows how to play football. It's not attacking, free-flowing like Klopp but he gets results. So for me, they're the two best managers in the world for me, Simeone and Conte. So if one of them's free, you've got to go for him, Lee. Will I see us going for him? No, because I don't think the Cronkies will do it. I think that they will say he's too expensive. We want this uh, trust in the youth thing and get this young coach behind them. I think we're stuck. The only way we're going to get this manager out is the crowds now being in stadiums. So I put to you, Lee, uh, and get your questions in, by the way. We'll pick up, do a couple of questions before yeah. we do wrap up. Uh, we'll pick up some questions um, uh, in the chat as best we can because it's going quite quick. Apologies, Dave. <laughs> um, and uh, I, I think personally that 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 is the the way we've got to be be looking now, Lee. Is to how are we going to move forward and progress as a team? And that's what I'm looking at. So I'll put that to you. How are we going to move forward, Nick? Well, listen. As what do you want from a manager, right? You know, obviously, first of all, you want them to win to to uh, to win games. That's what first of all. That, you know, you want to be a winning winning team. Also, you know, to put the cherry on the cake, you want it to be an entertaining winning team, which Arsene Wenger got, yeah. Mm. But at the moment, we've got a team not winning, and it's not entertaining neither. So the two the two things that I really want 
as a fan and not there. So we need to we need to do that. For me now, we need we need to to make the change. We need to bring in someone that's going to bring in a winning mentality to the football club, and then a team that's going to entertain as well and, and make things that you know. I know I'm going to Chelsea on 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 um, on Sunday, and the chances are that they're not they're not going to um, that we're not going to win, and we're not going to be entertained. And and I don't think that's acceptable for Arsenal Football Club, you know, um, through 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 the years and what 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 we pay as fans. I don't think that's acceptable, like you know. So there we go. What's this one from the Villa? Fan? I'm a Villa. Fan. Fred, uh, I'm a Villa fan, but I enjoy listening to you guys in the background while studying for my medical and school exams. Thank for helping me focus, mate. Thank you so much for uh, listening. Good, and good luck, you. luck with your exams, you know. Uh, good luck and, with your exams, um, mate. Good luck to Villa as well. Got a little soft spot for Villa. I'll tell you, what, I've always got a soft spot for Villa after the season when they got relegated at the Emirates and they come down in the last game of the season. Their fans that day were absolutely sensational. You know what I mean? Proper, proper fans. So uh, good luck to Villa for the season. Hundred percent agree with that. Um, Neil's fact said, "Congrats on 10k. Love the channel, lads. 10k, Lee, unbelievable. Yeah, We're unbelievable. Tonight, Thank you, guys. That's unbelievable, like you know." What's this one, Liverpool? Uh, now? Steve, yeah, let you read this one out, Lee. I've followed Liverpool since 1983, but this is the weakest Arsenal te- team in terms of mentality I've ever seen. Love from Canada, like you know. Thanks, Steve, uh, and I hope it's all nice there out in Canada. Couldn't agree with you more, mate. You know, um, I, I, listen, I, I've I've watched um, Arsenal uh, a little bit maybe before that. Well, I don't really want to say, but uh, listen, we was a poor team in the 80s. But you know what? We we was a poor team in we've 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 been a poor team certain times of the, of the season. And I tell you what, in the seventies, I think uh, like we was a real poor team. But you know what? We were struggling, and we went and bought Malcolm McDonald, and he become the, he was the, actually at that time the uh, record signing in England. He made a statement, you know what I mean? Like um, made a statement. When, in, in when we was at our, our worst, 80, 81, 82, around that time, made the statement with Charlie Nicholas, made a statement, you know, made a statement when we was at the worst time of our, uh, in 94, 95, Dennis Burkamp was Burkamp. a statement. Mm, mm. It was. Now and that's what we need now. now. That's what we, we need. need that. So when we've been at our really bad times at Arsenal, when this fact that we've had them, there's always been something we've had to, 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 to cling on to like, you know, and we've not got that now. And, 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 and that is a heartbreaking thing for me. Like, you know I mean? As an Arsenal fan and I've got no, people say you're looking forward to the season. No, I'm not looking forward to the beginning of the season because this has been the worst weekend all summer for me now. Like, you know, I've had a great summer and then along come, along come the Arsenal on Friday night, ruin that. And then, like, you see all the other top teams in the in the league, the teams that we should be up with, like, you know, um, winning. And then to top it all off on me Sunday, you know what I mean? Like, I've gone around my mate's um, sister-in-law today who's got a big house, big swimming pool, and they forgot to turn the, the eating on for the swimming pool. So I couldn't have a swim, and I ended up watching the Spurs game, and they bloody won. You know what I mean? So all in all, it's been Horrendous a disaster. weekend, mate. So thank you know what I mean. So when people say you're looking forward to the football season, roll on the cricket season. That's all I'm saying. Like, you know? uh, that's a good way. That's a good little segue. Uh, James, thank you for your kind donation. Hi guys, a Leicester fan here. Uh, great to see other fans other than Arsenal on the channel. Really much appreciate your support. Yeah, and we will be doing other content. We'll be doing other content to to uh, with other teams as well. So it's not just a, a Arsenal based. It is on a on a Sunday night, but there will be. We'll be talking about the Premier League and how it's gone over the weekend in the week. Absolutely. Uh, hi, guys. Lester Fan here. The reason we've been successful is the business model. We research character and have succession planning. The reason I absolutely think that's spot on, Lee, I actually think Leicester are the be- one of the best, well-run, most well-run clubs in the league. I absolutely love the passion from the ownership. I love the way that they've got a connection and a relationship with the manager. Um, and I think, personally, their recruitment has been spot on. If you go back to when Leicester won the league, obviously, Jamie Vardy is one of the only players who's still there, right? They've replaced Mares with Harvey Barnes, they've replaced Kante with Ndidi, they've gone and got Samare now, they've got, got Tielemans in, James Madison in has replaced like the Danny Drinkwaters of this world, the back line they've got with Soyuncu, with Fofana, with uh, Castagna, with James, 
I, I think apart from Schmeichel and Vardy, they've pretty much replaced like for like, and they're still up there competing with Champions League football. Yeah, they, they, listen, their model, and that's what I'm saying, it's not all about um, on the field. It's about off the field as well. You know, um, you can turn around and say it was harsh. They got rid of um, their, their manager that won, the, won in the Premier League. They got rid of him. They said, like, you yeah. know, no, it's not um, whatever it was. They brought in Brendan Rodgers, right? They sold Harry Maguire for £80 million. They've sold players for a lot of money, but they're brilliant and well-organised recruitment. They've now won the Premier League, the FA Cup and the Charity Shield in the last five or six years, which I've never seen Leicester or ever even imagined Leicester doing for, for a very, very long while. And Leicester, over in my time of watching football now, have won all the domestic titles in uh, England. You know, for a club like Leicester, fair play to them, class. Absolutely. Class, well-run football club because they won the League Cup a cup uh, under Martin O'Neill. And, um, you know, probably that's what they thought that was where that was going to be the the uh, the pinnacle of um, being a Leicester fan. Oh, no, no. And they've done it a right way and done it properly. They've actually done it with... Um, Good recruitment, a fantastic recruitment team, and it can be done. You know, 100%, like, mate. That, 100%, that, that, mate. that is it, like, you know. What's this one here? Arsenal or the Leicester? James. Yeah, James, again, love it from the Leicester fan. Arsenal have let a succession of top players leave free, and the characters of the player are poor. Let me just jump in on this one, Lee, because on, I think just... what's really important here, I think what's really important to remember here, right, and he's spot on, the reason is, and it's about character of player. Now, I want to bring this up, stat DNA. Right, stat DNA was brought in by the gazeteers of this world, all the metrics, all this rubbish that we've seen. Stat DNA by buying it might get you players on FIFA and Football Manager in the right areas of attributes that you like. But one thing it doesn't show you of stat DNA, Lee, is your mentality, leadership, and your passion and desire. Oh, and oh, that oh, is oh. what we are lacking, mate. So you might see technically gifted players coming into the club. You might see big, strong lads like Thomas Party or Gabriel now coming in. But let's look at the mentality, shall we, first of all, because there is the mentality of somebody like James Milner or Jordan Henderson. You ask, you put them up against Meza Ozil, nowhere near technically good enough in comparison to Meza Ozil. Put the mentality and the passion and desire of those two and they leave him dead in the water. So I think that's where we're lacking on that one. Um, this is from Steve. Just to follow up, Liverpool and Arsenal both have bad years, but you can still be a tough team to play. There's a disconnect between the players and the manager. And it looks like that's, that's happening. Lee. Listen, I think that's a great point. It's always great to hear what other what other fans say because they're neutral. They don't see what we're seeing. They haven't got the passion for it. They're all saying the same thing. You know, even... even uh, Fans of other clubs are saying this is not proper arsenal. This is not this and that. So it tells you everything you need to know. Yeah, it really does. Lee, I've got to have to get you to answer this one, mate. I'm going to read it out. Um, thank you so much for your kind donation. Um, we've got Irish Gunner since 1978. Tell me, Lee, what would George Graham have done with Chaka when he disrespected Arsenal? Where has our class gone? Come on, you Gunners. Hashtag Cronky out. Well, you know, George Graham wouldn't put up with it. And, 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 and nor would Arsene Wenger. I'll be honest. But, but, it's, uh, it's a tougher question because football has changed so much now. Like you know, yeah. what I mean, it, it, you know, uh, a lot of the power has gone to players. You could, you know, look at, the, you know, whether you like the situation with Harry Kane or not. You know, it doesn't sit right with me in in, in football, if I'll be honest. And I, I remember a Chelsea player. I can't think of the central defender that sat sat. You know, and didn't even bother to play football for a couple of years because he was getting such big money and all that. Like football has completely changed, and managers have certainly not got. You know, George Graham could not manage Arsenal like like he did back there. Now, simple as that. It, it, yeah. it just wasn't right, you know. No, you're spot on. Uh, Mr. Podolski, what a player he was. I loved Podolski. Thank you so much for your kind donation. The difference is that Arsenal is not attractive enough for top quality players. We're going to end up with zero points after three games. Hashtag Arteta out. Lazy, yeah, right? Are you going to end up with that? That's a great zero point because at the end of the day, I, I do see us being bottom of the league come the end of the transfer window and that's going to be making it a little bit tougher to try and get a few players in. But, you know, listen, do you know what? I'm going to say this now. Anybody that signs for Arsenal when we're bottom of the league, that tells me that they've got mental pressure, mental up here, because they think, do you know what? I'm good enough. I'm going to make Arsenal better. So bring them on. Those sort of players I want, because they're going to look at it and go, do you know what? I don't fancy that. No, I'm going to sign for the Arsenal. I'm going to make them better. That is the sort of player that we want coming through our doors at our football club. 
hundred percent. We're going to do some quick fire questions now, Lee. So we're going to have to make the answers short so we can get through them. Uh, Andy Arsenal, thank you for your kind donation. Coming into the transfer market, we need a centre midfielder, a centre attacking midfielder, a right back, a backup goalkeeper. And do you know what? I'd add a striker to that as well. They didn't even get one. We need to get the owners and the board out. A hundred percent. hundred percent. I could not agree more. Agree more. Uh, it's a question for me from Jonathan. Uh, Dan Potts, do you think Ten Hag is the best person to take Arsenal forward because of so many young players being in the squad? Why Arsenal did not look at him when Emery was fired, I don't know. Do you know what, Jonathan? I 100% agree. And what I like about Ten Hag is he's got a style of football which is attractive. So he would be good for the young players. My only issue with Ten Hag is he's not a proven winner at the very elite level. So I would rather get Antonio Conte. But if we're looking towards a younger coach or someone with a style that's attractive, Ten Hag would have been 100% somebody over Mikel Arteta. Wilson has said, why are Arsenal preferring Erdgaard over Madison Lee? Madison is Premier League proven, scores goals and provides creativity in our midfield. What do you make of that? Oh, I think that a um, couple of things on that. Maybe the price is too much and Leicester don't want to sell, don't know. Ulegaard, I think, is a, is a decent player. But do you know what? Why can't we, if we can get Ulegaard on loan, well, it could still mean that we could still get Madison or, or, or someone else. The whole midfield needs changing. I don't care what anybody says. You know, it needs changing. It needs a complete and utter overhaul. And Ulegaard coming in is not enough, in my opinion. No, I totally agree. And I think with Erdegaard, we've already seen, haven't we, what he's got. And I think that he's, well, he's got glimpses. I saw him play very well against Palace and Brighton towards the end of the season. And I thought he was brilliant against West Ham away and at the North London derby. But actually, in terms of consistency, I didn't really see it. So he has got time to grow. I would prefer Madison, but I think it is probably going to be Erdegaard. Lee, let, let me ask you this before another question comes in. What positions do you think we're going to strengthen before this window shuts, mate, before we wrap up? I, I think that we'll, we'll, we'll depending on the, the Aubameyang and, and Lacazette yeah. thing, <laughs> I think that we'll definitely sign a midfield player, maybe two. I do think that we'll do that. Obviously, a backup goalkeeper we'll sign. And, uh, and I think maybe a forward along the way. But but ultimately, I think that um, there will be a couple of, couple of, um, there will be a couple of changes in there. There's got to be. There's got to be. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I, the team needs needs changing up a little bit. Like we need to bring in some creativity in in behind the midfield, but also in the midfield as well. You ain't gonna, you know. Sometimes you have to have someone that can pick a pass from from fifty, sixty yards, or, or or go run on a run for twenty foot. I looked at other teams today, um, and I didn't really watch a lot of football. I watched Spurs today, and you know they've got players from midfield driving through like on the counter attack like you know if and we need to be able to get players like that it's not all about pass and intricate move pass pass it's about players driving as well we need to get someone in that's going to get the ball from the edge of our box and go forward with it like you know party has been a big loss by the way he has been a big loss mm. Yeah, massive, massive loss. And again, I don't quite know why we're sitting there and not doing anything about that, but that's another story. Uh, last question, guys, before we do wrap up. Do you think that Aubameyang and Lacazette are really sick or is there more to this possible bust up with the manager? We kind of half touched on it, Lee. I'll give my opinions because I know you give yours. I actually do think there's been a re there's been a, a bit of a fallout and um, I feel like there's going to be some issues now for what we do with Aubameyang and Lacazette. And if we are going to sell them, we don't have much time left to get somebody else in. But if we are going to get some money for them, I don't know how much it will be. I imagine it will probably be sort of uh, 20 for Lacazette tops, I think, and maybe a little bit more for Aubameyang. But I don't expect them to be going for 50 million or 45 million and us going and clubbing together and getting Haaland, that's for sure. So we're going to have to be very realistic about and wise and smart with our moves if we are going to look at replacing them. And for me, Alexander Rees that would be a great shout from Real Sociedad if we've got enough money. Uh, Vlahovic from uh, Fiorentina, uh, very, very good centre forward, very strong. Um, and for me, looks absolute top notch quality. So if you were going to replace like for like, then I would go with uh, Izak and Vlahovic. Uh, Smith Rowe needs to practice his finishing. Um, Smith Rowe and Saka, actually, Lee, um, I think do need to uh, yeah. concentrate on their, on their end product. And I know they're young and it might come. But I think it's a good point. Guys, we've had so much interaction tonight. Um, we're going to finish on this one. Uh, James, thank you so much for your kind donation. Lee, let's put this to the you. What would you say a minimum would be to show progression in the team? A centre attacking midfielder is a must and a new striker to be the new duo. It's what I'm feeling, but 20 million for a second goalie is bad business. What do you make of that, Lee? 
I totally agree. I think that, you know, as I said before, we need to bring in two midfield players. I'll actually want, I'll bring in two midfield players, new midfield players and a, and a, a cheaper option in goal for a backup line, whether it be a free transfer and put all my eggs in the basket for two central midfield players. That, that's what the way I would do that, you know, um, and, and go down that route. Um, for me, that's more important. Yes, the forwards need overhaul in a work as well. But do you know what? I think that if we was to overhaul that, that midfield, it may give us a little bit more creativity, um, free up the forwards a little bit where they wouldn't have to be so stagnant. But, you know, Mikel, Mikel has got to change his tactics if he's going to stay at the football club. But hopefully, like, you know, uh, the two central midfielders are coming, a new manager. That's my opinion now. I just don't think it's going to work with Mikel. And I think that we need to, to pull the plug down. I really do. Yeah, I think we're going to have to. And I would get Conte in personally before the weekend, but it's not going to happen. Uh, a couple more Snooper Chats, then we're going to wrap up. Scott, this is a great question, by the way, Lee. Uh, Lee, if you're the owner of the club, what's the first thing you'd look to fix? Well, I've just said it, the manager first. That would be the first thing I'd do. And then I would give him the funds to 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 get his, to get a creative midfield place in the side and uh, um, um, back him as best I could. Yeah. Uh, last one. Uh, thank you so much for your kind donations, all of you tonight. Absolutely amazing. We're going to end on this one. Uh, Arsenal's problem is with the fans, management and the owner. We wanted Wenger out without a plan. Emery gave us hope but we didn't give him a chance. Uh, let's end on that one, Lee, just very quickly before we wrap up, because obviously the fans are a massive uh, problem, in my opinion. A certain section of the fan base have accepted mm. mediocrity, uh, wanted Wenger out, wanted Emery out, and then the same ones wanted to protect uh, Mikel Arteta. Do you think the fans are going to go down the same route at the Emirates and get Mikel Arteta out, essentially? Or do you well, think of course they will do. No, of, of course they will. Like, you know, let's this, 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 this have it on Arsene Wenger at first. If Arsene Wenger would have come out when he when he had all... Because he had all the power on Arsene Wenger and would come out and said, you know, I've got to do this because of the owners and whatever. He he protected the owners. If I'll be honest, look, what, what, the shambles that we're in and everything now, he protected hey, right. the owners. Right. He protected the owners over the fans. In my opinion, that's my opinion. You know what I mean? If he would have said to me, oh, I'll come out and turn around and said, look, I've got, you know, I've got no money and no money and all that. Like, you know, what was the worst thing that could have happened to him? They sacked him, right? Yeah, then it'd yeah. been mayhem. There would have been absolute mayhem. But he didn't. He chose to back them and go against us fans. That is why I went against Arsene Wenger. Not for footballing reasons or anything else. That was what I did. Emery had his chance. Uh and and um, for, I don't think it was backed in the summer, but the football from the after the Europa League final till we actually got sacked was dis, was was atrocious. It's as bad as what it is now, maybe even worse. So he deserved the sack, and for that exact reason, Arteta deserves a sack as well. I think it's a great way to end. Just going to read this one out before we do that. We need action. Uh, pressure needs to be put on the club to improve the squad and the club set up. Dan there will be, so the voices will donation. be heard on Sunday because the fans are back in the stadium and they will not put up with a performance like that on Friday. The away fans didn't. Half of them I see were leaving before the end of the game and the fans at the Emirates will certainly not put up with that as well. No way will they say that. But I can guarantee you at the beginning they will be giving it uh, all of our support giving it all and hopefully we won't have to go down that route. But if it goes pear shape, I guarantee you, they'll, they'll, they'll listen. They will hear what the fans think. Lee, been an absolute pleasure, man. Uh, absolutely loved talking to you tonight. It's been really, really good therapy for me and uh, hopefully for yourself as well. Listen, there yeah, was nearly yeah. 3,000 people watching live at one stage. That is absolutely outstanding. If you haven't done so already, please smash the like button. It would mean a lot to us. And please hit the subscribe button. We hit 10K tonight, which is amazing. Uh, thanks to everybody in the chat. Great interactions, great comments, great questions. Uh, until then, we will see you next time, guys. Up the Arsenal.